Hi everybody, welcome to the Chai Chi Tai Chi web show. I'm Dane Dormio. I'm joined by my good buddy Andrew Brown and a special guest this evening. The uh, Chris is the uh, head instructor of Green Dragon Tai Chi. He's been doing martial arts and wrestling since he was a kid. He's been recognized as a master level instructor by the American Tai Chi and Qigong Association. And he's got a diverse martial arts background that I'm sure we're going to get to hear about that includes Yang style and Chen style Tai Chi. And he's been training since, uh, in some form, since 1977. And he's been uh, teaching since 2014. So I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing, hearing about your journey, Chris. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So, yeah, I did. I started 77. It was a karate class. Back then I was young. I was born in 70, so I was 70 years old there, or seven years old. Sorry. And um, that class, it was kind of actually a, a tough class. There was, uh, we used to spar in a circle. And my first experience sparring was a guy punching me in the eye, right? <laughs> and I started crying. And when you left the circle, you could pick the person who comes after you. So I picked my brother to replace me. And the person who wins stays in. So I don't think he was too happy about that. But <laughs> me and my brother used to wrestle all the time. So that's my way of getting back at him. <laughs> Welcome to martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> Your eye, pow. Yeah. So, my But I, I haven't um, always been in, active in classes. Like, but I've, I took the things that I've learned in the karate, like the stances and mm -hmm. the, you know, the reverse punching, the kicking, things like that. And so we would... Throughout the years, we would spar and just kind of, as I was talking to Andrew earlier, in the neighborhood I grew up in, you know, we would kind of jump each other for fun. And it would be real punches. Of course, you wouldn't try and kill the person in their face, but they give, you know, we'd slam each other. We love to wrestle, real punches. So there was that air of combat. Mm -hmm. Then later on, uh, when I wrestled, there was about maybe five wrestlers just from my neighborhood alone, like the, the block where I live. And... You know, we wrestled in school, we wrestled outside of school, and anybody else who wanted to wrestle. So, And then later on, getting into Kung Fu, uh, Andrew, you mm. said you did Wing Chun. I also did some Wing mm -hmm. Chun and some Five Animals Kung Fu, other other forms. Like my one of my first Tai Chi teachers, he was doing Tong Bei as well as Wing Chun oh. and mm -hmm. Magua. And so he kind of mixed it in. He was really good at those things, but I wanted to narrow it down a little bit so I could, you know, try and focus on one thing and get good. So... I was doing uh, private lessons in the Bagua and the Wing Chun and the Tai Chi, mm. and then eventually I chose the Tai Chi. So that was part of my journey. What was it about Bagua that you decided to drop it? It was tough. I mean, yeah. I really enjoyed it. I love Bagua. We were doing deer horn knives, and mm -hmm. I loved the circle walking, and, and I thought it was really cool. But since I had spent a little bit more time in Tai Chi, I thought it, you know, I had a little, little bit of deeper root in that, so mm -hmm, I decided mm -hmm. to, to stick with that. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Good question. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you've been doing uh, kung fu a long time. So tai chi is, uh, you fell in love with tai chi, obviously. Yeah. So what was yeah. it about tai chi that like really like hooked you? <laughs> Interesting story. So at the, <laughs> when I was younger, uh, maybe I was 23, and my son's mother, she was doing tai chi. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I had no interest in it. I thought it was way too slow. Me and my, my training partners were running the heels, swords, killing each other. And um, later on, I actually saw I met a, Kung, a Tai Chi master who you could push him and he, he was like immovable. And then he could easily move me and all these different things. And, and he was short. He was he's like, you know, I'm pushing him. He's like, push harder, push harder. I'm like, I am. I'm pushing. And so. I said, wow, there's really something to Tai Chi, right? I had started learning like a 24 form from a video. And um, this was actually before I, I met that master. And then once I met him, I said, I'm going to I'm join a serious class. I'm going to look into this. So mm, that, that's mm. what got me interested in that. It was a martial so, aspect. So yeah. touching a master was what made you love Tai Chi. Yeah, that's, you can say that. Yeah. That's, that's a exactly great point. Right. You know, yeah. the first time I, I met Chun Shaoxing, 
Uh, mm-hmm. and I did push hands with him for just for a few minutes and it was like mm-hmm. touching cotton. They're like touching a cloud. It was like, you'd push him and it was so soft and there's almost nothing there. And then you would just be out of position and you would lose your balance. And that was yeah. all there was to it. I was like, what is this? How do you do this? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's the great thing about Tai Chi too, is that it can go from one extreme to the other. Like you can mm-hmm. be like a cloud or like wind, or you can be like a mountain and, and certain people specialize in, in those different aspects and, you know, everything mm-hmm. in between. So, and you can hopefully ch- be able to choose at will if you want to disappear, mm-hmm. reappear, things like that. So kind of like the, uh, characteristics of a dragon right yeah yeah <laughs> with water <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's amazing how how much can be transmitted through through touch and if you uh if you you know if you make contact with somebody who's a high level of skill and and cultivation it's uh it can it can certainly be a an, an inspiring experience and i can uh I can I can I can relate to that from uh, from my own experience too. One of one of the one of my teachers was uh, he was um, he was in his seventies when I knew him, and and he actually lost uh, about half his intestines and a bunch of his other innards to colon cancer, and he wore had to wear a colostomy bag around uh, under his shirt, and. Uh, and he um, he basically kept him, was keeping himself alive uh, from, by doing tai chi, and, and I did, but I didn't know any of this about him when I first met him. I just you know he's just like a really old dude, uh, old old skinny dude, uh, and who's 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 friends with my sifu, and he, he was in the school one day, and and just with the lightest of touches, he could move me all over the room, just just like he was barely touched me. But when I tried to do anything to him, it just it was like nothing there. Like, yeah. yeah. It was so great. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I've, I've met um, an older Tai Chi practitioner. Um, he's, uh, well, he studied under Yang Zhuing Ming uh, with YAA. His name mm-hmm. is Louis Peleas. And, you know, me and my wife, we travel to Fort Lauderdale every now and then. And we'll go see like Lester Holmes, a couple of practitioners down there or teachers down mm-hmm. there. And we met Louis Peleas. It was a World Tai Chi Day. And so um, I don't know if you guys ever did anything like uh, brush knee drills or anything like that, where one person does like a brush knee and the other mm-hmm. person is standing right in front of you and they'll, they'll redirect and then they'll do the brush knee back at you. So yeah. you kind of trade almost like push hands, just train the energies back and forth. Mm-hmm. And uh, Louis Peleas, is, he's in his 70s and he's probably, well, I don't know, he's, he's much shorter than me. I'm not going to say his height, but um, he's, he's very small compared to me. But he's he's got his, his spirit is very high, and so as we're doing this brush knee drill, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about like I'm doing the form. I went to look away and look at my hand like that. <laughs> the next next thing I know, he warded me off, and I flew and I hit the wall. And when I hit the wall, he was right there standing right in my face with it, and he said, "Where's your spirit?" I was mm. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, mm. um, and I, I was thrown. I was like, the heart. He's like, no, it's in the eye. Oh, shit. I was like, oh yeah. Right. He's like, don't look away. I was like, okay, great. I was like, yeah. Where's your target? I love that. Target? I mean, that was just a great example of what Tai Chi can do for like even up in the ages. You still have this connected strength and the ability to just toss somebody my say it, my size, even though you might be smaller. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because you're a moments. conduit, you're not the generator. You're just conducting energy. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Love it. Yeah. So uh, I think I was reading on your website that you guys do competition. Yeah, I've done some competitions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sorry, we've done some uh, okay. some push hands, and I've done some mm-hmm. forms. Um, how do you feel about competitions? Well, I did. I did competitions. Uh, that was my first school. Was like I, I mentioned uh, when we were chatting. Uh, it was a wushu and a tai chi school. So we mm-hmm. did. Uh, no, wushu is if you're not doing competition, you're not really doing wushu. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so you got to do the competition. Yeah. So the tai chi side also did their competitions with them, and so I grew up with that, and that was what made me like sharp. So I would have to do the forms in a certain way. You know, you're always mm-hmm. trying to match the master who performs the compulsory forms. Yeah. And so I, I liked it and it really, it, you know, it gives you a goal. Obviously mm-hmm. when you have a competition coming up, you're always training for the competition. And as soon as you finish, you got to, what's my next competition? Cause 
then you lose sight and you kind of drift and don't really practice that hard. So mm -hmm. we did, that was a, it was a good inspiration to keep me going every day. But I, after doing it for, I don't know, four or five years, I just kind of just said, I don't think Tai Chi is a, a great competition style because the variation is so wide. If you start getting away from the, like, this is the exactly the way to do the form. You see Chen Satan, you see Gao Jamin, they are the example. Anything else that's not that is not as good. And I didn't mm -hmm. like that idea. So I kind of just, I've seen great masters and they look so different than these compulsory forms. And so it right. just kind of like drifted from competition. But uh, yeah, I was wondering what, how would you uh, feel about the competition? Encouraging your students to go, like, you know, you got to support them. You I have. You judge too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have supported uh, my students to compete um, in forms and, and push hands. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have refereed um, push hands competitions. So there's a lot of, you know, there's people on this side of the competition that, that say you shouldn't compete, you know, and then there's people that say it's great to compete. Um, I think it's I think it's good to compete, especially things like push hands. Um, mm. The thing that the people who don't like competitions, the thing that their point is that a lot of times it winds up being like shoving matches or yes. it doesn't look like yeah. Tai Chi anymore, things like that. But I think you have to go through that in order, order to find what you know how you can really use tai chi in actual situations so if you're always in a compliant situation like with your students or you know whoever it may be and you know they, they may be pushing but they're not really trying to control you they're not really trying to to win against you and i think mm -hmm. that's another thing that uh people have is that well you're not supposed to be trying to win because of ego you, you don't want your, your ego to be so high um but at the same time if you yourself can maintain calm and you say, okay, I'm not here to win. I just want to represent Tai Chi. I want to see if I can use the principles while somebody's trying to push me out the ring or take me down or joint lock me, things like that. How can I remain relaxed? And of course, you're not going to remain 100% relaxed as if you're practicing on your own. But if you can maintain some degree of relaxation and kind of work the principles, then you get used to it. And then the more you compete, you know, then the greater your degree of relaxation under stress should occur. But if you never experienced that, then, you know, everything is just speculation. And you can say that, you know, your Tai Chi works. But I always say try and do your Tai Chi against somebody who doesn't care if your technique works or not. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that like is, that. yeah, even if like so even if you and I are from different schools and we're competing or we're sparring or whatever, you still have some degree of care whether or not my technique works because we want Tai Chi to succeed. And so. If I do something great and or you do something great and I'm like, oh, I need to aspire to that. I really like that technique. You know, even though we're not from the same school, I'm still, you know, ad admiring that Tai Chi level. But maybe mm -hmm. somebody from a different style. So when we go to the Arnold uh, competition and they have this extreme push hands event, there's people from Jiu Jitsu. There's people from Judo. There's all these grapplers. And of course, they're not going to, you know, be as relaxed as a Tai Chi person. So then. You know, it's up to your degree of training, you know, yeah. to determine how relaxed you're going to remain and if you're going to use proper technique or will you fall into that shoving match category. So exactly. I can see, yeah, yeah I, I can see why some people, you know, would say that competitions aren't that good. But at the same time, I think I've proved the point that, you know, you kind of need it if you want to say you're a martial artist and if you want to say that your techniques really work. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be uh, competition in an actual competition setting it could be going to another school and just practicing with some other people who aren't your style or inviting people to come to your school things like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so every year i have a um a picnic an annual picnic and i would invite different schools from the area to come and like only one school came like maybe twice or something like that mm. it seems like everybody is kind of separate and they didn't want to really come and what we do we have like a bunch of food and mm -hmm. we do forms, sword forms, whatever, open hand and push hands and maybe share applications, things like that. So, you know, it just doesn't seem like everybody's open to that. Um, maybe their uh, ego or whatever. But. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they don't want to bruise their ego. That's different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other way. Right. Uh, cross -pollination no, is, oh, yeah. is great. Cross pollination and, and collaboration and, um, I mean, what uh, in in terms of the uh, 
uh, you know, what one might call the martial uh, aspects or benefits of, of Tai Chi. Um, it's uh, what uh, the, the framework that I find most useful is a progressive adaptive challenge and uh, a reciprocal learnable challenge um, where, where uh, your aim in training with a partner is to, uh, is to challenge that partner uh, in a way that's make that don't make it impossible for them, uh, but make it so that they it's a it's, it's a challenge that they can learn from, and they're doing the same thing to you. So it's a it's a uh, it's a it's actually cooperation in the sense of a mutually uh, reinforcing reciprocal uh, learning process that that. Um, can be taken to arbitrary levels of of intensity uh you know depending on the the comfort and skill level of, of the people involved so the more the more we all get together and and do that kind of stuff yeah the less uh uh it's it's about ego and the more it's about learning and sharing and enjoying the arts together yeah i i have two things to say about that um mm -hmm. that's how uh, you should teach your students, right? You don't want to just blow them out the water. You can show them the power of Tai Chi, right? But when you're training them, you just want to stay a little bit a, a little bit ahead of them just to challenge them a little bit. And then as they get better, then you, you stay ahead of them a little bit more, just show them a little bit more. But what you were saying uh, relates back to one of the competitions I did in 2016 where uh, I met some of, the, some of my best friends for life in that competition. And we were pushing hands and, you know, I won that competition, but I didn't try to blow them away. I was actually trying to teach them as we were in the tournament, pushing hands, you know, I was letting them feel different things and experience different things. And cause you know, you know, not trying to brag, but I knew that I had them. So there was no reason for me to just, you know, keep blasting them out or, or mm -hmm. blocking them doing whatever. And so they, um, they really like, and they had nice touch too. So it was like, they weren't, I think it was a, the first competition where they weren't trying to push and shove. And, and I could tell they were trained correctly. Mm -hmm. they, they had soft, they had intention. And after the tournament, you know, I, I told them, hey, I got this. And they come to the picnic. I said, I got this picnic and we're doing a workshop and got teachers coming up. And so every year they would start coming to my workshops and, you know, we just stayed in touch after that. So that's another thing that you can get from competition is camaraderie. Awesome. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. true. Uh, I, I met many great people at competition. And you, if you get into the circuit and you're in it for like three or four years, you'll probably see a lot of the same people over and over. If you're going to like your local competitions or your state, or maybe your region, you're going to yep. see a lot of the same people, especially if they're like, I'm trying to get my grand national. I'm trying to get like a, a state championship. So I got to go to 15 competitions. You, know? right. <laughs> you just <Yep>. keep going. <laughs> One day yep. you'll win the grand champion. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's uh, so that's great. And uh, what um, what attracted you to Yang and Chun style versus like Su and Wu, or uh, why not just Yang and not Chun? What made you do both? So the Yang style, like I had mentioned, I, I was started learning the twenty four, and even though it's a Beijing form, mm -hmm. uh, it has more Yang style qualities, um, and so. I was looking for uh, just a young Tai Chi class to learn the long form mm. and I learned a long form. And then my, uh, my wife, she wasn't, she wasn't my wife at the time, but she travels to San Francisco and it's like a, a national conference she does every year. And she was in the park and she saw some people doing uh, Tai Chi. She didn't know it was Chin style Tai Chi. She, mm. she asked the guy, she said, what is that? And she told me about it, and I was like, oh, that's probably Chin style. And sure enough, it was the Chin style. And so the next year when she went back to San Francisco, we were like, okay, we're going to look up a teacher out there and just go and, you know, go to this class and check him out. So we went, and I met uh, Sifu Tony Wong out there. He's the American Chin Tai Chi Society. And come to find out, he's Kung Fu Brothers with a teacher here in Cleveland. So they, they both studied under Grandmaster Chin Ching Joe. And so we took I took my first Chin style class with him. And then I came back to Cleveland and I studied with uh, Carl DeChara, who is his brother. 
And then I found out there's another uh, student of Grandmaster Chen Ching Joe's in Columbus, Ohio, which is about maybe two and a half hours drive. Mm-hmm. And so I would, I'll drive over there. He'll do workshops and you know, I'll go to his class whenever I can. So it, it's, it's interesting to see the flavors that they have, even though they come from the same teacher, you know, that the form is pretty much the same, but everybody has their own adaptation, mm-hmm. or variation of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And they I, each have, oh. go ahead. <laughs> oh, I, I was just, I like to tell my students that you can't practice my style. My style is my style. It's the way I've developed over my time. You mm-hmm. will learn your own style. Do your best to imitate me. Imitate whatever master you like. It's fine. You'll learn and you'll get better, and your style will finally come out. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, I think it's a culmination of everything that's inside of you anyway. Like it just mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. – it'll have that flavor or expression. Yeah, yeah. your applications are probably more uh, wrestling-based than a lot of other people. Like yeah, like the takedowns and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. totally. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you you can't you can't uh, do somebody else's tai chi. You can only do your own tai chi. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you're the only one who's breathing here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, following oh. the principle is the most mm-hmm. important thing. Just you know, mm-hmm. breathing deep, standing straight, and relaxing. Get that song going. Mm-hmm. Then you mm-hmm. know you move, and how you move is how you move. <laughs> yeah. So I also read that you are a qigong. Uh, master or qigong lover as well so uh, a, yeah what, what triggered that what, what, what changed you from i'm a martial going, artist to i'm a i'm a healer now <laughs> going back to my wife <laughs> oh your wife so, all right <laughs> yeah so melina i actually met her in a tai chi class years ago and when she was in that tai chi class what she was actually looking for was qigong mm. and the qigong that she was looking for was medical qigong mm-hmm. and that was like Many years ago, so we've we've been through on this journey, and uh, finally, I would say about two years ago, she well before that though I was already falling in love with the energy work in Tai Chi and Qigong. So mm-hmm. I, even though I came in from the martial side, you know, just just feeling the, the chi and, and being able to breathe and, and it, I, I, like I said, I fell in love with that. And so two years ago, uh, she was with some colleagues at a dinner, and one lady's husband mentioned that he went to see a Qigong master in Pennsylvania and the guy was amazing. And, you know, and she was like, wow, I really, I want to go check him out. And when she came and told me, there was like no hesitation. I was like, okay, let's go. So normally I was like, well, who is it? You know, let's question it or, you know, try and figure it out. But his name was Dr. Ted Sibick. And uh, like I said, he's in PA. And when we went, I don't even know what I was expecting, but I was just totally amazed at not only the things that he could do, but the things that he brought out of me, the things that I felt and was able to do. And so that that was the start of it. So our, our actual uh, title of certification right now is Medical Qigong Therapist, and we're in a three-year program. So this year we'll be finishing up, and we'll have our, our Master's of Medical Qigong. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> So, um, wow. All right. So what was it about, what kind of sensations did you feel when you were starting out with, with Tai Chi? Like that, like that kind of made you like trigger and like, what is this? This is, this is different than, uh, than karate. <laughs> <laughs> so of course there's the, you know, that there's always that palm, the palms getting mm-hmm. warm. Right. Mm-hmm. And then you start mm-hmm. to feel, uh, you know, they say the Tao that can be talked to that uh, that's not the true Tao, right? Yeah. So yeah, you know, there's right. feelings inside, but also you know, just hold in when you when you feel that energy between the palms, and um, sometimes it's magnetic or repulsive. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, lately I've been getting these sensations of s- sucking in, like just like that pulling. So it was it's those kind of things that kind of stood out, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's there's a, a pretty common theme in my observation of the the transition from uh, like uh, we uh, like 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 uh, you and I share a similar kind of journey and starting with the martial and 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 being involved in kind of what we call external martial arts for a while and then um, 
and then just and then at some point discovering internal martial arts and and getting the sensations and the breathing and uh and 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 uh kind of that that whole path opening up and a lot of uh a lot of uh tai chi masters um or or qigong masters came come to qigong through martial arts and a lot of that's 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 kind of a a, a flow seems to be a flow of experience because i remember the first time i tried tai chi i was in college and i, I was doing all kinds of other martial arts uh I, but I tried, uh, I went to a Tai Chi class and I just, I feel like I didn't have the patience for it. Mm. <laughs> it, was, it was too slow. I, I was only jumping around and kicking high, but, um, right. but you know, at a certain point, uh, I was like, oh, here's some new cool Kung Fu I can learn. It's like, okay, breathe and move slow, feel, okay, I can do that. Or, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, mm -hmm. and it, 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 it kind of ripened. Uh, and, and then the, the whole, uh, world of, of from from martial qigong the whole world of of medical qigong and spiritual qigong uh open up and branch out um and and so i'm curious chris about uh ha, has has this uh journey had a spiritual dimension for you or how has that evolved mm -hmm. over time definitely um in my spiritual i i think for me, it's more of a connecting to nature. Um, I've always been uh, in love with like going to the parks, being outside, being near water, things like that. But when you start feeling the energy and you can feel energy from from nature, like trees, plants, things like that, even water sources, there's a there's a connection there and an appreciation of of all life, not just human life, and you know, we, of course, we have pets and things like that, but. You know, it, and I think, and that is spiritual in its own way, or at least to me in that sense. So, yeah. And as far as, I, you know, without getting religious, you know, there is obviously a connection to source. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 One of the things I loved about Tai Chi was when I proved to myself that that old statement that everyone, all these old religions and tons of different things said, all is one. Everything is one thing, and you're mm -hmm. all you're united with everything. And it's like, I, I don't feel united. I feel individual. I feel separate. And then you do these kind of practices, and then you're like, oh, there it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I am one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It was a good day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So coming, going back to mm -hmm. the uh, – Marshall side, yeah. Andrew. I know you mentioned uh, that you did jujitsu. Do you still practice? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Well, not especially not during COVID. I have been thinking about getting <laughs> back into it uh, yeah. for a while. Uh, I've been really focused with my teacher, who is a uh, he's a Chun twentieth generation disciple, and so uh, Master uh, Sung Bolkan. But uh, he's Chen Xiaoxing's student, and so I'm Chen Xiaoxing's grand student. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I've been really focused on Chen style and trying to uh, – we were, we were actually had a plan to go visit Chen Zhao Go, the, the hometown of Chen style, back in – oh, God, it was in April. We had a plan to go in April, and then – and I was like, oh, I got to get, I got to get like $5,000 for the test and do all this stuff. And I got to put this together. And then COVID happened and it got canceled in February. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I don't have to deal with the money part now. <laughs> yeah. But, but now I'm like that's really that's focused right. on being prepared for that. Because he said, what you got to do is you're going to go there and you're going to do your Lao Jha. You're going to do your, your basic Lao Jha form by yourself and you have to you have to show your own style you have to show your own flair nice. and know it without any mistakes you know that kind of stuff or they're just gonna mm -hmm. be like uh you know we're not a, we're, come back in a year or two you know I, so yeah. i don't want to do that i don't want to get delayed right. <laughs> <laughs> if i go to chenja go i'm getting my my certification i'm getting my license <laughs> right yeah. so i'll move on from there but yeah that's my focus right now yeah i'll tell you my take on that chris is um that when i when I discovered Tai Chi, which was um, after I, 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 uh, I've been practicing all different kinds of external martial arts for 12 years since the time I was a kid and, um, and including uh, 
including uh, Chinese arts, Japanese arts, Filipino arts, Brazilian arts, um, uh, things like jujitsu, and um, uh, and uh, what I what I realized uh, when when I when it all all came together for me, and I realized what I was doing. I realized, oh. I've actually been practicing different versions of Tai Chi all along. <laughs> kind of like universal martial art in a sense of the study of the physics and physiology of movement and, and mastery. And, and I, I realized, oh, okay, this was all kind of like preparing me for this. And, 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 and this is the thing that kind of transcends and includes all of that. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't necessarily like abandoned any of it. <laughs> you know, it's all, uh, it, it's all it's all built in into to my experience and my my practice. So, uh, you know, I, I, w- I would say I still practice jujitsu in that sense. I, you know, I, I, I to yeah. in 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 Thai. Yeah. You know what's interesting is mm-hmm. the main uh, one of the main things in Tai Chi is uh, being sung, right? Relaxation. Mm-hmm. And any art, once the masters reach that high level, they have particular relaxation and the ease of technique i guess that's what makes it masters right so it's like um we have the conversation of well can this style take down this style or can a judo person take down a tai chi person yeah they can if they have more song if they're more relaxed of course they're gonna you know so it doesn't come down to really style it comes down to who's put more time and effort in who has more Kung Fu, right? Time and effort. <laughs> More Kung Fu? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. My Kung Fu is better than yours. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually, I, one, of, one of my favorite stories uh, that I heard from my Sifu was there was this, uh, there was, there was this uh, master fighter who um, was uh, uh, said to be undefeated, and, uh, and, uh, but nobody knew what his style was because uh, when when he, when he fought uh, a kicking style, he would he would uh, kick. When he fought a punching style, he would he would punch, and you know he would he would appear to have the style of, of whoever he was fighting and beat them at it. And somebody asked him, "What's your style?" He said, "I don't have a style. It's I just follow." Mm, I follow. Nice. Yeah, it's yeah. mm-hmm. good one. That's awesome. No, I yeah. like what you said about the relaxation, and it's kind of universal. Um, the big secret to power is the change from relaxation to tension and back. Like it's that spring effect. Mm-hmm. And I remember uh, reading something that was saying like Muhammad Ali's muscles are more supple than Marilyn Monroe's <laughs> <laughs> because he was so well trained that he could be relaxed completely, like almost loose and then snap and be so fast and strong and powerful. And then back to that relaxation state in a second. Yeah. And that was what yeah. made him that's what makes an athlete powerful is that quick twitch. How can you go how fast can you go from the relaxation completely ready for anything to complete action committed do that movement and then back to relaxation for the next movement. Right. Yeah, that that's the big athlete thing to me. That, yeah. That's kind of, it's kind of a, a yin yang uh, polarity that could be said to be sort of like a battery effect the the transition mm-hmm. between uh relaxation and and not not tension but activation because there's actually i I've, I've seen some uh uh some research on this and and um and it's it's what my own experience is that there's there's at least two if not more modes of activation of the body the muscles or whatever so mm-hmm. so i mean like you know if you saw a normal person bend their arm like this they'd be using their muscles in one way to do that. Whereas if you saw a quote unquote Tai Chi master bending their arm this way, they would be using their muscles internally in a whole different way. Mm-hmm. That, that might, to the untrained eye, appear to be the same on the surface, but if you are sensitive, you can, you can, you can see it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not a uh, tension, but what I think of as, as, as activation or fullness or, uh, you know. Um, okay, emptiness to fullness. I see what you're trying to say. Between empty yeah. and full. Or yeah. you know that, that generates the uh, and 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 the and the the time rate of change the 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 slower the transition the the less the power generated the the faster the transition the the greater the power generated and yeah the the, the yeah. yin yang battery. Mm-hmm. 
that's a good point. And I think that Tai Chi should change a person's body, the way they move, the way they breathe, the way they think. Um, and just, just that example alone kind of says how, you know, the, the arts change you, internal arts in general, or even mm. martial arts in general. Mm. I was telling my students, like, um, so we're in Tai Chi class and we try to raise our arm without activating the shoulder, right? I don't want that shoulder to come up. So if I'm doing my crane, I want to keep it that nice and set. But then what about when you go home and you're reaching for that cup in the cabinet? Are you just <laughs> grabbing that mm -hmm. cup down without, you know, without mindlessly thinking? Because you've probably reached for a cup in the cabinet a lot longer than you've been practicing Tai Chi. So you've built up that habit. You don't even know that this is mm -hmm. how you do it, right? But then the more, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then the better you get at Tai Chi, though, then you have the ting and the mindfulness comes in. You say, oh, wow, I'm, I'm raising my shoulder. So then, you, you know, you want to get to that point where everything you do is like in a Tai Chi manner or fashion. Yes, yes. Get to the point where you're always doing Tai Chi. That's what I try yeah. to tell myself. I'm always meditating. I'm always doing Tai Chi. I'm always meditating. I'm always doing mm -hmm. Tai Chi. <laughs> yeah. That thing with, with the shoulders is, is really great, too, because that, that's, that's such a... I, that's such a, uh, a a Tai Chi universal. Like, I, I'm, 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 I'd, I'd be amazed if there's any Tai Chi teacher that doesn't teach their students. You know, you know, lower, drop the shoulders, drop the shoulders, sink the shoulders, and and because most people do uh, lift the shoulders, lift the lift the arm with, with the the shoulder and the neck. You know, and, yeah. And and it's That's why we and, carry so much uh, tension in this area because every yeah. Does and looking <laughs> back on it, I I have I have sympathy because. Because I can remember, like when I, um, when, when I see new people and I'm teaching someone and like they don't realize, and then I point out to them, and I kind of realize, but they can't figure out how to stop doing it right away, and they got it, yeah. you know. And I, I sympathize because I, I think of all the times I, my heard my see for sings the shoulders, sings the shoulders. Yeah, I remember this used to be hard for me too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Some people have uh, uh, not only problems with dropping the shoulders, but sometimes. They can't breathe deep, which is uh, might seem strange to some people, but they can't do deep abdominal breathing. Yeah. And so yeah. like we were talking the other day, like how do you, you know, you have to kind of change the language or change your teaching method in order to adapt to that particular person to get them to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. understand that that process. So, you know, you have to be adaptable as a teacher to get people to mm -hmm. understand the principles and how to get there. Now, I have a quick question about... Um, so with COVID times, are you still teaching remotely? Are you teaching like Zoom classes and stuff like that? Yeah, actually, I teach, uh, I, that's exactly where I was going to go next too. Because I, okay. uh, I, 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 uh, I, I didn't mention to to Andrew, but uh, Chris is actually on the same platform as us. He's also I guess, oh community. Oh yeah, e Green Dragon. No, I've seen you guys on. Uh, yeah, Green, Green Dragon. Dragon. Yeah. yeah, see that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I'm doing a, a martial <laughs> fitness class on there. Oh, cool, and, cool. And uh, right. silk reeling, silk reeling class. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right. So yeah, I was going to say, because uh, of the remote, it's tough to touch your students. And I've noticed my favorite teachers in every martial art have been the teachers that are not afraid to just touch you, to just come grab you, correct your body, grab you by the hips and push you down, push your shoulders down, push your chest down. Mm -hmm. uh, the teachers that are like, well, sexual harassment and all this stuff that's been going around for the last 20 years, people are really reticent to do that. And I was going to say, yeah. how do you, when you get a new student and you, oh, I got to fix your shoulders. I got to fix your hips. I got to fix your knees. Just, you I just, just tell them, hey, I'm going to be touching you a lot. Or how do you want yeah, Just ask, is it, is, it, is it okay if I adjust your shoulders? Is it okay if I adjust your, yeah. I touch your arm. Is it okay if mm -hmm. I touch your back? Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable feeling my back? Can you feel how I breathe? Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. just just communicating. Have them sign the waiver. I think <laughs> sign the waiver first. That's the big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but that, uh, that, my, is, that is a touchy subject, though. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's definitely touchy. My my teacher. Uh, every time we're doing a John Duong or a standing pole, mm -hmm. he'll like get up behind people, put his hips to your yeah. to the back of your hips, and he'll just. Yeah grab his put his hands on your hips and then sit down with you and be like really right up next to you and it's like is that is that chin shot fine for me i don't mind but i know someone else might <laughs> right right is that chin shot thing you're talking about well uh his, his student. student yeah because yeah. I've, I've seen them yeah chin village even chin shot wong he'll he'll come up behind the person and like you said he'll just 
mold right around them and, and sink into their posture with them and for them, mm -hmm. which I think must be an excellent way to feel, you know, how to get yeah. into that posture. And I think if there was any, you know, um, ill intention that the student would, would sense that and feel it, mm -hmm. um, but you never know some people nowadays, but I think mm -hmm. anybody that's at Chin Village or training with those guys would definitely appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 We well, can definitely say there's, you know, there's, uh, for one thing, there's, there's a lot of value in, in the traditional teaching practices, which is why they're still around. Uh, and, you know, the con context is everything. And, and also that um, uh, t the, the, whole, the whole art is, is about sensitivity and touch sensitivity in particular. And you got to develop that by, uh, by actually by making contact. <laughs> um, and, uh, which is, um, and, uh, and of course, you know, things, things do happen and, and, uh, and karma catches up. Um, uh, but, um, touch is an important component of Tai Chi, uh, for as in terms of the health benefits, because actual physical human contact and, and, and even, even, uh, in particularly non-sexual human contact, just bodies physically, you know, in contact and stimulating is is good for the, you know, is 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 part of the the health benefits. Yeah, um, like yeah. the the um the, the the massage and the stimulation and the um and the neurochemicals and whatnot, um, and also uh, energy, the, the context and like if you know if. Uh, context is everything and also energy is everything um and uh and so you know if the uh communication is good you know asking permission is is great and also being energetically clean yourself and and being clean mm -hmm. your, your own intentions but right. what i found practically is that what what's very common in a lot of not just tai chi and, and qigong but things like yoga and, and all kinds of martial arts is uh is uh instructors will give physical adjustments by pushing something into the position it's supposed to be in. Mm. And that's just, you know, it's like, Oh, it's supposed to be here, put it here. But uh, in my experience, what that tends to do is cause a counter reaction to tense up. Yeah. Yeah. To, to, to resist that. And, yeah. and so um, if, so, so the kind of thing that I do uh, that, I, that I find works really well is, um, is uh, adjusting not with force but with sensitivity. So, for example, if somebody's like has a a forward uh, tilt in their neck like this, I'll just like barely touch right here or not even touch, and that just the creates a natural tendency. They notice, they feel, and want to straighten up. Or or if something is is off to the side, rather than push it from this way, I'll just I'll gently just barely put my finger on the other side and say, move this towards my finger. And then I just keep that pressure light like a butterfly mm -hmm. and allow them to move. So yeah. um, just like that uh, bio or, you know, neuro, uh, neuromechanically, that's what I found to work best in terms of giving adjustments is the lightest touch is the best if you're, if you're trying to, to teach, you know, to adjust somebody in that way. Mm -hmm. I've, I've experienced that. Have you experienced that, Andrew? Having well, I've had Dane touch me. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, because the reason I asked was because of your Chin Chao Xing connection. Mm -hmm, and, uh, mm -hmm. So the person who did me was Chin Bing. He would come oh, to yeah. um, he would come to USA once, or yeah, he'd do like a tour. I guess he would do a world mm -hmm. tour, but mm -hmm. he'd be like maybe going to like three or four states in, in the U.S. And one would be in Columbus, where I mentioned before, and we were doing standing. And mm -hmm. I guess my tailbone was not quite in the right position. And he did exactly what you said. He was just lightly touching, tapping, tapping mm -hmm. until I released it. And so, yeah, I felt that. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and I, I did have a, a, a student that uh, he'd, he'd, been, he'd been training for a long time, just wasn't getting stuff. In, uh, and I, I in, until I just... I put my hands, I, he, he went through his movements and I would just put my hands on him and move him like into place or keep him in place, just like almost like a puppet master. And he was like, wow, thanks. I've never had anybody actually, uh, you know, correct me in that amount of detail before. It's really great. He was, he was really <laughs> grateful for that. So, 
uh, you know, con context is 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 everything in terms. It's of essential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But um, I, uh, there's this this kind of ties in with the whole online thing because mm -hmm. uh, teaching online is um, for now until the technology catches up. You know, <laughs> physical contact <laughs> soon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, a, few, a few more iterations, and you know, we'll we'll have body suits that are sensitive enough that we can do virtual push-ins and things like that. But um, uh, you know, for now, <laughs> uh, until then, uh, there's it's not and not just because of the, the the pandemic and lockdown situation, but just things are already you know have been moving and accelerating in the direction of of virtual teaching and learning. Not everybody has uh, a tai chi school or teacher in their vicinity uh and and uh or you know not maybe not the ones they want to train with or whatever um and there's it's a i see it as a double-edged sword virtual uh online instruction and um meaning that there's there's trade-offs there's uh there's things that there's, there's advantages and disadvantages um but i uh i'd I'd, li I'd like to hear um about your uh, your perspective on that and, and how you see that evolving since especially since we're actually using the same platform which uh, for for those watching it's uh, elightenment.com is uh, is a, a platform that's specifically uh, for uh, mind body uh, type online learning communities and um, we have a community on there Tai Chi, Tai Chi. Chris has a community on there. Uh, Green Dragon, Tai Chi, um, and uh, and so when 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 uh, when we talked before, you mentioned you you've been teaching in person uh, for a group for a while, and you were kind of migrating to some online teaching and both live teaching and like recorded instructional videos and that thing sort of thing. So um, how's how's uh, what, is, what does all that look like from your perspective? Where is, where is it heading? Well, not everybody wanted to transition to the Zoom, but a certain amount of people did. They were there willing to go and do the Zoom classes. And we were able to actually um, show some postures and keep them moving in the form because they don't know the whole form yet. And the things that don't require touch, like the things that come in the solo practice, like uh, verticality, sinking and you know breathing those kind of things you can kind of guide them through verbally as you watch and you know you can correct certain things to a degree um, but like you said it is a double-edged sword um, i had a group and they did learn some movements but then um, when we opened up the parks again we met we had masks on and we did our distancing and so i was able to actually get a look at them and some of the movements that we worked on and because of the two dimensions of TV, some of the angles were slightly off. Mm. But other than that, though, they were they were really able to follow and, and learn some of the, the new postures and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, a, another good thing is the Qigong. We were able to do some good Qigong work that doesn't um, require too much uh, stepping, moving, or, or too much, uh, I should say, fixing of the postures. Yeah, and that's mostly a solo practice. Yeah. <laughs> you're not you're not really yeah. pushing up against people very often in Qigong. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's almost kind of a, a beautiful uh, uh, balance kind of mechanism in the universe or something that uh, the for uh, more or less the the solo practices transmit okay through video. The the partner practices are are more more of a challenge. Um, but the but in terms of health qigong, medical qigong, um, you know that uh, that's something that the world needs now more than ever, and um, and it is the um, it is the sort of thing that that can be transmitted reasonably well uh, through through online uh, live live video and, and recorded uh, medium and. Um, and, and if, you know, maybe not perfectly, maybe, maybe not hundred percent fidelity, but at least 80% fidelity, which is still good. And, uh, and, and, and we can see it as, as a challenge, as a, as a creative challenge for ourselves as teachers to adapt our, our approach and our, our, uh, our, uh, our, our systems and our, our methodologies 
uh, in, in service of global health and healing and uh, raise, raising the, the vibration of humanity, which is this, this awesome, uh, this awesome journey we're on together. So I'm glad we're all yeah. in the team with that. Yeah. And, and that's interesting. That's exactly what my uh, medical Qigong teacher talks about is, you know, his mission is he feels raising, helping, helping to raise the vibration of humanity through the small actions of, of teaching and, and everybody's teaching and it has that ripple effect. And he actually, his, so he lives on a mountain and in his land, he has acres and acres of land that he let grow with no pesticides. I mean, he'll, he'll mow the grass around his house area, and but he he puts out food for like the deers. He's got bears mm. that come through there. He says since he's you know been restoring the land, bees have come back. He's got like hummingbirds everywhere. So he's really doing his part to to kind of help the ecosystem, you know, self balance. Uh, Good for him. That's, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I I have a, I live in the city and uh, I have a small backyard, so I I made a small pen area for the birds where I put out bird seed and there's some little mm -hmm. things they can walk on and they can <laughs> hop <Yeah>. around. <laughs> yeah. A little hummingbird feeder, you know, you do your best. Uh, yeah. One day I'll have 50 acres. Don't let it go wild. <laughs> and, and Andrew is so sensitive. <laughs> and Andrew is so sensitive. He he puts his arm out for the birds to land on. And we'll I do my that. John Zhuang in the in the thing, and they just land on me. Yeah. <laughs> one day, after, <laughs> one day. They, after they land, they can't take off because you know, mm, <laughs> that's the real trick. <laughs> yeah, that's it's a it's a it's a tight tea joke. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to make sure, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, before we wrap up here, Chris, uh, what's the best way for people to uh, to connect, reach out if they want to learn more more about you, more from you? What's uh, what's a good way for people to connect? E with you? Email is always best. Um, C Burnett at GreenDragonTaiChi.com, or just go to the website. Uh, same thing. www dot green dragon tai chi dot com and uh, all the contact information is there we've got the list of the online classes that we do and our, our in-person classes that we're we're starting to start back hopefully we can continue unless uh, things get worse so mm. we do use distancing we we do have the mask and, uh, yeah yeah we just do the best we can you know of course we're i have done a couple videos of touching but we have gloves on and we go and sanitize afterward but just to show some applications on some videos mm -hmm. things like that so yeah and, and only with uh one or two students yeah yeah no so, man, so, uh, coronavirus is crazy of, um, <laughs> speaking of uh your your contact information uh will you put that uh in uh comment on this video on facebook so that I uh, will so gladly yeah. people and um, and your your website connects to your online learning community, right? It does. It connects to um, the enlightenment. I have the link in there for that under online learning. So it's in the menu up top. And I've also got some uh, courses that are that are through the website. You can just go straight to some pre-recorded courses. So. Oh, that's excellent. That's super super awesome. Super generous. And I'm uh, I'm curious how where the where the where you how'd you come up with the name Green Dragon? <laughs> I was lucky. I know <laughs> when I thought about green, I was I was actually thinking about the planet. <laughs> I was thinking about uh, I was I was vegan at the time. I'm not vegan anymore, but I I was really thinking about uh, the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, People said I fight like a dragon sometimes. I mentioned before about reappearing, disappearing. Mm -hmm. So like uh, like Andrew said, dragons are water, so they can go from clouds, mist, and then to the sea or the ocean. So mm -hmm. that was that was kind of where that came from. And then later on, I found out that uh, it was like a spiritual, like uh, in the medical Qigong, it's like the, the thing for the liver. It's like a, oh uh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Green is the color of wood in the the Taoist. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there would be multiple meetings. Yeah, there's an infinite meetings. Yeah, sure. Green Dragon. Oh, I know. That's a great restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I do cook. How'd you know? Yeah, so um, there's, uh, there's definitely a lot more we could go into. So we'll just say uh, 
Until next time. Yeah. Until next time. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's great to meet you, Andrew. That was great chatting with you, Chris. Thanks for coming yeah. on. Same here. Thank you. Dan, yeah, really, <laughs> totally, really, really appreciate everything you're doing. I'm glad we're on the same team. And I'll, uh, I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm trusting that, that this is of, of value to someone out there. Somebody's going to, to hear this message, it's going to resonate with them, and they're going to end up in exactly the right place. So <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thanks for watching and sharing, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you.